So welcome to the 410 talk uh, for the speaker workshops. And we're going to get started and we're going to talk about Porsche by uh, Michael, Gen uh, Generac Michael Generacus and Keith Lee from Spider Lab. Trust me. Thank you. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay, so just to introduce ourselves. So my name is Michael Generacus. I'm the director for Spider Labs APAC. And uh, Keith is uh, the senior consultant in the Spider Labs APAC group. Um, so I'm from Australia. Keith's from Singapore. So uh, the motivation for the Porsche tool is, uh, as pen testers, we do a number of internal network pen tests as part of our day today. Um, there are a bunch of awesome tools and techniques for capturing and, and cracking credentials, for example, Responder. Um, and we really wanted to fill the gap from, you know, once we've got a low-privileged account, even, even perhaps, you know, the, the client will give you a low-privileged account to start with. We really wanted to fill that gap between having a low-privileged account and getting uh, to a high-privileged account in terms of the tooling. And, we, and also help with a few common issues that we came across as, as pen testers on, on our day-to-day. -day. So we developed a tool called Porsche to help with this. Um, we developed Porsche because we found, we found similar tools had a number of issues. So um, apart from the fact that you know, they're all sort of disparate, you've got a number of PowerShell scripts and different, different tools that you use that don't really sort of sync together, um, we're finding that a lot of the tools had limited support and success on more recent versions of Windows. Um, they were not a, as effective against uh, systems that have implemented common hardening techniques, so we had to sort of figure out ways to bypass that and then run what we needed to run. And we wanted a single um, but also modular tool to cover the techniques rather than having multiple tools. Um, so Porsche uh, aims to automate a number of the techniques that we commonly uh, perform on an internal test um, after we've got a low privilege account. So things like privilege escalation, lateral movement, and also a bunch of convenience modules that, that we uh, typically would like to use. Um, just as an aside on the name, so Porsche is actually a type of uh, jumping spider that feeds on other spiders. Um, they're known for being very intelligent and have you know, good problem solving capability. So we thought that was a, you know, being from Spider Labs, we thought that was a pretty cool name. So uh, that's where it is. So this is a basic workflow. For, for, our, uh, for our purposes for demos, that's on the right you can see a basic uh, network that we've set up for, for demonstration purposes. And it's got a uh, domain controller, a couple of hosts, and, uh, and uh, the hacker, right? So this is the basic workflow of Porsche. I'll dive into each of the, the individual items in more detail on how it works. Um, but just to give you a bit of an overview, um, we've got our credentials, right? It checks the credentials, makes sure they're valid and they work. Um, it enumerates a list of users in the domain admin group. Um, it checks if the account is part of the domain admin group, because you know you might get lucky, you never know. Um, it checks this file for stored credentials. Um, it syncs the time with the domain controller and, and attempts to exploit MS14068. Um, if it's vulnerable, if not, it goes down and checks uh, MS08067 uh, and MS1710. Um, it checks which host the account has admin access on. Um, it checks for impersonation tokens belonging to the domain admin group. Uh, if you don't get lucky with that, um, well, if you do get lucky with that, it adds uh, the impersonation token to the um, domain admin group, and then you can run Mimikatz on the DC. If not, it runs Mimikatz locally, and you get some hashes. And then if we get any new hashes or, or passwords, um, we test those credentials, and we start again. So the whole idea is that it's, it's iterative. We work through it, um, and then every time we get a new password, we start the process again. Every time we get access to a new pro uh, a host, we start the process again. And we will just continually work through this sort of basic workflow um, until all the passwords or hashes have been exhausted or all of the hosts have been compromised. Um, and then we can continue with some of the post-exploitation modules we have. Um, another thing that we added recently is it's not just an automated sort of click and go tool. You can run any of these individual modules uh, you know, directly um, or, or combine them. So we wanted to have that flexibility as well. So we start with the low hanging fruit. Um, so uh, credentials may be stored in group policy preferences. So there are a number of locations where you might find credentials. So uh, drive maps, local users and groups, scheduled tasks, et cetera. Um, so when you create a new uh, group policy preference, an XML uh, file is created in sysfile, which contains all the relevant configuration information. And you may get passwords in there as well. And any authenticated domain account can access that. So you don't need elevated privileges for that. And Passwords are encrypted using a known 32-byte AES key. I say known because Microsoft published it on, on MSDN. Um, presumably, inadvertently, it'd been there for years. Um, so, yeah, we can decrypt them. 
Um, but of course, you know, once this came out, you know, it's a pretty big fail. So uh, Microsoft patched it in MS 14.025. Uh, um, but and so so the result of that patch is you can't create new um, group policy preferences um, that rely on saved passwords. But it doesn't remove the old passwords, right? So how many clients and organizations do you know? They're, they're just patching things, you know, sometimes wrote, you know, a new patch where you apply it, but they're not really understanding what's going on in the patch. They don't know what it's fixing, and they don't know that they need to go back and clear out those passwords. Um, so we still see it all the time on tests where, where they still have uh, old insecure passwords that we can decrypt using that key. Um, <clears throat> then we, we check for MS14068. Um, so the... Uh, Basically, it's a privilege escalation vulnerability that allows you to elevate your privileges to domain admin. Um, so basically, you can create a fake pack claiming that your regular user that you have access to is a member of the, the domain administrators group and then you know, elevate your privileges that way. Um, if that's not successful, we do try um, you know, the classics, right? Uh, MS 08, 067. It's, it's an old one. Um, it's mostly patched, but you never know your luck, right? So it's easy one to do, it's, and so we, we check for that. Um, the more recent one, you know, thanks to Shadow Brokers and the NSA, um, allegedly, um, we have uh, MS1710, um, and that's the SMB4 um, that can also uh, allow for remote code execution. So if we get remote code execution on those boxes, well then that's great, right? Um, so assuming there's no passwords in Sysvol, and assuming those, uh, those vulnerabilities have been patched, and they're not exploitable, you know, what do we do next? And uh, that's where we get to the impersonation token. I'll hand over to you. Okay, thanks. Um, Information token is when a user logs into a system and then, which button is it? Okay, and then a delegation token is created, which is converted to an impersonation token, um, even after the user logs out. So um, this impersonation token has exactly the same right as the delegation token. Um, it doesn't get deleted and it remains on the system until it's rebooted. So what happens is if a domain admin logs into a box, um, and then the attackers gets to the box, he can use that token to execute domain administrative commands that run on the main controller um, yeah, using having the same privilege as the domain admin. So uh, yeah, this is just an example of what it looks like when we the, um, using the privilege escalation using the token. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so if there's no impersonation token, what happens? Porsche will run the Mimikatz and as well done the local password hashes. So if there are new password hashes or new password that gets, it gets added to a uh, database and then the process continues and it tries to use the new password to attack hosts that have not been tested before. And it repeats this again until there's, it runs out of password to test or until all hosts have been compromised. So the thing about shared local administrator password is um, sometimes I need administrators are lazy or they try to do it the easy way out. Um, all the systems are using the same shared local administrator password. So when you compromise one host, you can compromise the other host in the network which having the same shared local administrator password. So yeah, so with the, um, with the shared uh, local admin passwords, the idea is that um, you know, typically when we talk about privilege escalation, right, we're, we're usually only looking to go up. But one, one of the things that we want to do on a pen test is get a lot of coverage and you know, it's, it's a real sort of pain in the ass to check every sort of host in the, you know, in the network that you may be, uh, may be in scope um, to see if the uh, credentials that you have could be useful. So, so the idea is so we can get a, a lot of breadth and um, we're looking to expand on that uh, and I'll get, I'll get to that at the end. Um, so yeah, uh, so the other thing, you know, going back to the context, right, um, there are a number of uh, controls that have been implemented um, that, uh, you know, can stop us from doing these things. So we need to figure out ways to bypass that, and Porsche has support to automate some of these bypasses. So uh, Microsoft created the anti-malware scan interface. Um, so it's designed to detect and prevent script attacks. So things like all your, all your PowerShell scripts, right, that you're running, it's designed to, to detect those and um, to, to shut them down, right? So uh, it implements a number of security checks, so it scans, you know, file, and memory, and stream, um, content source, URL, IP, you know, checks, um, and a, a whole bunch of other techniques. Um, it also has some support for um, breaking through obf of obfuscated scripts and, and identifying obfuscated scripts. Um, and Porsche currently implements two techniques to automatically bypass uh, AMSI. So 
the, the first one is like a real basic one. You might get lucky with it, most times no, but we still got it because it's pretty easy to implement. Um, so basically, if the host is running .NET uh, version 2.0, you know, you can see the whole string up there. It's a very specific version. You can actually force the use of PowerShell v2. So um, AMSI is supported in uh, PowerShell version 3, but not currently not PowerShell version 2. Um, so with that, you can use the dash version option, so it's dash version 2, and you can uh, force the use of PowerShell 2, which, you know, is bypasses AMSI, so uh, works well. But, you know, it's, re it's relying on that single version being available. Um, the more robust technique um, was created by a guy called Matt Graeber, and I apologize if I ruined his name, um, but uh, uh, basically um, it's a simple one-liner um, that unloads AMSI from the current process, and it doesn't require elevated privileges, and it works with PowerShell v3, right, with AMSI. So um, that's the robust one that usually works most of the time. Um, there's a bunch of other sort of bypass techniques that have been um, presented uh, over the years, um, and you know, we'll, we'll probably add some more uh, as we continue to develop Porsche. Um, the, other, the other control that we frequently run up against is app locker. Um, so Porsche implements a number of app locker bypass techniques. Um, so one, the first one is um, you know, exploiting weak path rules, so inappropriate folder permission. So by default, Windows allows read and write um, uh, under the Windows uh, directory, but Windows slash tasks, Windows slash temp, and Windows slash tracing. Um, so any binary that executes from these folders won't be blocked by app locker. And so you, Porsche just loads PowerShell into, that, into the task directory and, and we're good to go. So pretty straightforward bypass. Um, the other one that it tries uh, is with msbuild.exe. So injecting code into a signed Microsoft binary, um, you know, if, you, if you manage to do that, it will execute code without it being picked up by device guard. So msbuild.exe specifically allows for uh, inline tasks, which is basically uh, allows you to compile and execute code in memory on the target. Um, and you know, can be used to effectively execute arbitrary code on the target, and Porsche uses that as, as an app locker bypass if, if necessary. And the final app locker bypass um, is a, 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 a script that was written, I don't, I'm not gonna try and pronounce his GitHub username, um, but it was, it was written by that guy, and it was based on technique developed by Subteam, um, and it lets you run .NET code inside JScript or VBScript. Uh, so PowerShell, also. Uh, Porsche also has uh, support for the invoke obfuscation script. Um, so basically, it's a script developed by a guy called Daniel Bohannon, um, and it, al it allows for uh, obfuscation of your PowerShell scripts uh, d with the idea that you can bypass AV and other protections that might be looking for um, PowerShell scripts. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't work 100% of the time against every AV, but it, it works well enough most of the time. Um, the other thing as well, again, going back to the context at the start where we sort of said, you know, a lot of these uh, scripts and tools that we use aren't well maintained and they don't really uh, run well against newer versions of Windows. Um, the Invoke Mimikatz script, uh, script, which is the one that's commonly used um, to, to run Mimikatz, um, it's running an outdated version of Mimikatz and it can have issues with Windows 10. So the way that Porsche does it, uh, we use the Invoke Reflective PE Injection script, which runs the latest version of Mimikatz, or it can be any kind of code, it doesn't have to be Mimikatz, uh, in the memory of the target host, and it's a way more reliable version, uh, 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 way more reliable against recent versions of, of Windows. Um, so the other thing that Porsche does automatically is we've got this list of passwords, right? We've got this database. Um, we check it against any available uh, SMB shares or folders just to see what we can access, what we can't, and which passwords work with which, with which resources. Um, cool. And Porsche uh, has a bunch of uh, other modules. So we, we mentioned a bunch of like convenience modules um, and you know other privilege escalation related modules. Um, this is just a sampling. We're adding more all the time. So obviously it's available on GitHub. I'll throw up the link at the end. Um, so if, if people want to contribute, uh, they can. So currently, you know, it dumps wireless passwords. It looks for um, configuration files that are known to have, you know, passwords in it, like VNC configurations, party configurations, things like that. Uh, it dumps browser credentials as well. Um, and, uh, you know, key pass credentials, um, you know, config files, things like that. Um, it also, it also has uh, an, a, a recent module, which is automatic compromise of MS SQL databases. And I'll hand over Keith to, to go through that. Okay, so what happens in this module is, um, let's say if you don't have access to the SMB ports, but there's an MS SQL service that's running. So what this module does is um, look for weak passwords, whether you're doing, um, it 
test against the weak password that is uh, supplied by social engineering toolkit. And then if it's successful, enable XP CMD shell, like a, adds a local admin account on the box, and also enables the admin share so that you can run SMB stuff. Uh, dump hashes and via mimic, dump hashes from the same database. Um, dump clear text credentials via Mimikatz. Um, it also looks for interesting information stored in the database like uh, card information or password. Yeah. Um, so this is just a screenshot of what it does. So um, as you see in this screenshot, it detects that um, PowerShell is blocked by app blocker, so it attempts one or technique to bypass it so it can run invoke Mimikatz. And then um, it adds, uh, it found, it dumps the KDEX credentials from memory, and then it dumps the same, the hashes from the same database, and then um, it dumps the sorry, where is it, the MSSQL credentials, and lastly at the bottom you can see that it finds all the interesting data, and display in a format that is easy for you to see, so you don't have to look through all the tables and stuff. So currently Porsche looks for things like username. Um, so Porsche also looks for interesting files that could be like key pass database, um, unattend the XML file that can contain credentials, ultra VNC the NI that can also create credentials and um, documents that has the name password in them, and so on and so forth. And yeah, you can use other modules like there's a key pass module or there's a true crypt module or there's a bit locker module that can dump the um, the password and the keys to decrypt it offline. Can you use so, any of these modules individually? You don't yeah. need to let it run automatically, or you just want to run, you know, look, uh, uh, just want to use it to look for any files called, you know, password.txt or yeah. that look like they contain passwords, you can just do that. So even if you've got access already, um, you, can, you can just run the module individually. And it will automatically download them for you, so you, you don't have to pull it down individually. And you also display uh, like the first few string of what it looks like if it's a text document. Um, so the other thing that we do, another module that we have that's pretty common, that's very useful, is uh, dumping browser creds. Um, so it uses various PowerShell scripts. So first it checks if uh, Firefox or Chrome is uh, present on the, uh, on the system. It checks uh, if the current logged in user um, you know, what the current logged in user is and checks whether we have that hash or password belonging to that user in our sort of Porsche database, so to speak. Um, and then we have a PowerShell script that runs within that user session and dumps the credentials to a file. Um, the other thing we do, so this is an, uh, an example of like a convenience module that we have in there that's not directly related to uh, privilege escalation or lateral movement or anything like that. But it's a common activity that we would do on a pen test. So you know, most pen testing we do, or, or generally is for PCI, or we're looking for credit card information or something that's you know something of value like that. Um, so, so we've got a module in here that searches for pen on disk and in memory. Um, it uses a couple of scripts that are already written. We didn't write it, run anything new for it. Um, basically, um, obviously, the credit card finder on the disk it works through the same way as the the other modules that find interesting files works. But the way that the memory scraper works. Um, so Porsche will enumerate a list of all applications on the host that we have admin access on, um, and then once we've got that list of processes running, um, you know we have produced a table um, that you know shows which programs uh, are running on which hosts um, and what processes are common, and then we we look for interesting processes to dump. So we don't dump it all, obviously, uh, but this is what it looks like. So you've got that table there. Um, so let's say you're you're you know doing a retail client or something like that. They've got POS systems. It's likely their POS application potentially has has credit card information in memory. Um, so you would select that process if you've got access to that that host um, and uh, and dump the memory and see if you can find anything uh, anything good in, in the memory. Um, we've also got some basic support for analyzing hashes. So currently, uh, we can analyze if there's a blank hash uh, or if there are accounts that are using the same hash. Um, but you know, we want to build out this functionality a little bit further. Um, so one of the things that we uh, unfortunately commonly see on, on pen tests is password reuse between low privileged accounts and high privileged accounts. Um, so we sort of see that all the time where they, they use the same password for both. Um, so if you're able to get the low privileged account, it's very easy to get access to that. The higher privileged account. Um, so, so we've got a well, Porsche 
Uh, currently, this is what Porsche does. Um, it has a list of the valid hashes and analyzes it for patterns, obviously blank ones, uh, you know, reused passwords across different, um, you know, different uh, accounts and things like that. Um, so, yeah, and as I said, we're, we're looking to expand it um, and it can be useful on, on a pen test. So, where are we looking to take Porsche? Um, so, you know, something that we're continuing continuing to actively develop. Um, the biggest area that we want to uh, progress in is uh, attacking targets in adjacent networks via proxying through trusted hosts, right? So if we're in, in a particular network segment and we don't have access to other hosts on another network segment, but we have a host that um, we have access to on our segment that's trusted into the other segment, um, we can proxy through that to run Porsche then on those hosts that it can see. Um, so, so that's something that we're working on right now that we want to um, really uh, improve on and, 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 and I, I think it's sort of the missing feature right now that make, will make Porsche really more, uh, a lot more robust. So that's what we're working on now. Um, we're looking to add a bunch of data exfiltration modules as well because that's a common activity that, that we do on, on pen tests. Um, we would like to add support for more database modules as well. Um, so not just MS SQL, you know, Postgres, whatever. Um, and there are a few dependencies, as you may have been able to allude to, um, and they're not, it's not difficult to set up, it's not like trying to set up Metasploit from scratch, um, but you know, we, we want to create a Docker image just to make it you know, easier to set up um, and deploy. Um, so this is where it's located, um, it's on our GitHub page. Um, feel free to, um, uh, oh yeah, we'll just switch over, because we're going to do a demo now. Um, but uh, hopefully it works, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so, so check it out, it's on, our, it's on our GitHub page. Feel free to submit an issue if you have an idea or if you, if you want to develop a module of your own. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah? No, nothing? Yeah, there we go, all right. Um, so yeah, if you have, you have ideas uh, for, for modules or you have issues or bugs, submit an issue in, in GitHub or submit a pull request if you, if you want to. Um, and we'll go from there. So now we have a demo. Um, you have plenty of time, so you can run it. Yep, so I'm running this um, through the normal mode where it finds the boxes and try to compromise and get rid of the hashes and password and from compromising one box to compromising the domain controller. Um, I'll let you run first because it takes a while, but let me explain. I'll come back to it. So what happens is um, you get a password that you capture or crack from Responder or some other place. Um, so it managed to find that it has an admin access on one of the boxes, which is joined to a domain. And this is what you see. So firstly, it dumps Mimikatz, followed by dumping the hashes. So something interesting is um, one of the administrators has logged into the same box. So you do see a domain admin account here. Can you make the, the font size a little bit Big. larger? Can everybody see that? It's a bit small, right? Yeah. Can you? Um, yeah. You go ahead. Sorry. View or is it? Yeah. Uh, zoom in. Is it better? Is that better? Yeah, if, yeah cool. Okay, right. let's move back to the start. Where is it? Okay, so, yeah. Sorry, maybe just to take a step back, just to remind mm -hmm. everybody. Um, this is just a really simple network. We've got um, a domain controller. We've got a yeah domain controller. We've got a host that's uh, connected to the domain controller. We've got an, a separate host as well, and we've got the attack machine, which is what uh, Keith has got here. So pretty simple network. Um, it's just because it can take a while if you've got a, a, a large network. So we're just yeah. So on this machine that's joined to a domain, you there is a domain admin account. I mean the domain administrator has logged in. So um, it, after it dumps the credentials via Mimcat, it dumps the same database. Um, it analyzes that. It also tries to fix up the um, impersonation token. So that's an administrator impersonation token. So we can basically make use of either the clear text credential or the token. Since you have the past clear text credential, we'll the script will just, um, for sure, will just use the clear text credential to compromise the domain controller. Um, yep, it just tests MS14068. Since the first account we used was a local user account, it doesn't have access to the domain, so it will skip this part. If it has a valid user account, you will test whether it's it vulnerable to MS14068. Um, so now it has moved the lateral movement to the compromise the domain controller um, using the credentials that it had captured from memory. So to, it does the same thing, Mimikatz, um, same database, and then um, tokens. 
and then it collects all these credentials and hashes and compromise the third box, which is a um, host in the work group mode. But coincidentally, um, there's just as we, what we spoken earlier about the shared local administrator password. So these two machines, even though one is the domain, one is the work group, um, both are using the same shared local administrator password. So using the, um, as you see here, um, it uses the hash, NTR hash to compromise the third box. So in the end, um, it will tell you like, since it will stop when it runs out of hashes or passwords to try, or when all hosts have been compromised. So what you see here is uh, all the hashes that have seen and collected so far. Um, password first, followed by hashes, and then um, it does an analysis of what accounts use what password, what hash. So you can see that uh, these two accounts use the same password hash and so on. And then, um, and then you also list down what hash and what password it used to get into the box. So, and then it, it, it ends by saying that you can rather run post exposure module or it stops this way. So um, let's look at another thing, which is the MSSQL module. Oh, okay. Uh, large. Large. Okay, like just now I was explaining in scenario where um, there's only MSSQL port that's open, SMB ports are now open. So how do you compromise it? So um, in this case, it found a default account. It tried to test against a weak password. And then, um, so it got in, and then it enabled the XPCMD shell. It adds a local admin account. And then um, when it's trying to run other script, it realized that um, PowerShell is blocked by AppLocker. So it attempt one of the techniques, and then uh, successfully run Mimikatz on the machine, dump the clear text credentials, um, dump the SAM database, and then followed by uh, things like the password and look for interesting data. I mean, uh, it also enable the admin folder so that you can access it remotely, even though it's blocked in the initially. Um, in future version, I plan to do like every sub version is compromised. You return shells, so that that's more fun than just getting password. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that we're also developing um, is a tool. Uh, one of our colleagues in Singapore wrote as well. Um, uh, it's called Two F Assassin. So. Um, we're, we're adding in support where we can um, to, uh, it, well, the purpose of that tool is to automatically attack certain 2 FA implementations. So we feel like it's a good fit for, for Porsche as well. So um, so we're going to probably integrate the two. Um, that's not on our um, Spider Labs GitHub just yet, but um, you know, it will be soon and we'll, we'll probably integrate it for sure. So this is another module about uh, scanning for vulnerability. So it scans for MS 08067 or MS 17010. Um, um, it doesn't explore at this point, but as time goes on, we plan to add in because this we want to add in all the common techniques to get from zero to domain admin, yeah, or as easy as possible. So uh, let's go on to the next module. It's about um, files, finding interesting files. So um, same as usual, it checks whether PowerShell is blocked or not because it's easier to run post exploration with PowerShell and. After that, it finds all the interesting files that could contain passwords or other sensitive data. Because like um, previously, administrator might be storing password using text document, then they migrated to Excel, then now they upgraded to KeyPass, so um, myself download the KeyPass file. It downloads all the interesting files for you, and as well the location. Um, this one is to show that um, it's the same, it just show a bit longer. Give me a second. Okay. Um, if the administrator or the user has the key pass open on his computer, is able to dump the clear text credentials. So it's just using a common script, but um, it detects which user is you log on and op using the key pass software, and it has to run it in a context so that um, it can dump the credentials. If not, it doesn't work at all. Um, this is just another screenshot to show that it dumps the true crypt keys so that you can decrypt it offline. Um, there's also a module that we are working on, like just now we've been speaking about finding alternative route to attack adjacent network. So if you provide it with a list of IP address and it can't access those IP address um, initially by ping or whatever, but it found a route in an alternate host, it will highlight 
um, it doesn't show here because I don't have an example, but you highlight here, it says that this host has an alternative route to what you might be interested in. So this is just a small step to where we are going next, going to finish soon. Okay, um, last, last, second last, um, it finds clear text, um, I mean documents that contains credit cards. And as well, this is same as what we see just now, but it displays the card number, not my card number. So, <laughs> And then um, this is just what we ran just now, but it, as it takes some time, now he has finished running to show that it, it works. Uh, yep. Just a comment, you should, guys should check out Clocofy, done by Joe Gervais last year. Uh, Python 2.7, I made, I upgraded to 3.5 and did the PowerShell version, but it takes any exe file, image file, binary file, and turns it into a list, set of lists that you define. A list of Pokemon with latitude and longitude in front of it, clear text, whatever. It's pretty powerful. It's yeah, awesome. Definitely. Yeah, thanks, man. We'll check it out. Uh, you had a question there. So, in talking about sensitive data, you uh, you mentioned credit cards. How about uh, PII and PHI, which is a little more complicated than? Um, yeah. So, so at the mo at the moment, it's uh, relatively limited in terms of uh, you know what it looks for. Um, but that said, we are expanding that, and that's that's on the list to do. Um, we're trying to get the uh, the routing stuff in first. Um, but you know, expanding, expanding, uh, you know, our, our searches for broader categories of sensitive information is definitely on the radar. And obviously, if anybody wants to contribute, then you know, feel free. Yeah. Are you guys No, you can you can define um, the limits of the scope, um, or you can just let it run. Um, it depends. You just you just. We, we tried to make it um, as modular and as progressive as possible. So you can have it like run as much as possible against whatever it can do. Um, or you can either run individual modules or you can limit, certain modules have certain um, uh, you know, options to limit uh, what, what, what gets run. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yep, another question. Yep. It's now on screen, um, but that's a good idea. We should probably be able to ha add an option to dump it to a file. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Any other questions? I think we're out of time. Yeah, yeah. we're out of time. But oh.